Firefighters fight fire, as well as DEI training. New York wants to give cash to illegal immigrants. And what will the US do about Navani's murder? Or as Putin calls it, sudden death syndrome. That and more on this week's America Uncovered headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. As we've covered before, the US is facing an ongoing epidemic of loneliness and isolation. Fortunately, we have a solution. And no, I'm not talking about putting yourself out there to form new, long-lasting bonds in a community you can call your own. Ugh. I'm talking about dating robots. People are now getting into relationships with AI chatbots. However, researchers warn that these relationship chatbots aren't very secure and could be selling your data. Et tu, Joy? Et tu? So these robot relationships could be full of insecurities and cost you a ton of money. So they're just like any other toxic relationship. AI is getting more and more human. While I understand the need for companionship, artificial intelligence isn't a substitute for real human connection. It's hard and scary, but everyone should do their best to try and forge real relationships. Like the one I have with my totally real girlfriend who lives in Canada. She's a, a Shutterstock model. <clears throat> There's also a lot to talk about with the whole Gemini AI thing and its refusal to portray white people. Stay tuned because we got a whole episode about that coming up. But speaking of things you can't believe are real, the rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, who will be 78 and days shy of 82 years old respectively at the time of the presidential election. Many, many, and I can't stress this enough, so many people have expressed concern, to put it mildly, about their age. Most have focused on Biden's age, especially after special counsel Hur's report on Biden handling classified information where he said Biden had diminished faculties and a poor memory. Hur is going to testify before Congress about this report on March 12th. Trump is also old, but his age isn't as much of concern for people as Biden's, possibly because you are what you eat, so Trump is aging like a McDonald's hamburger, or I guess not aging like one. However, some think that Trump's age is a concern that should be discussed as well. Like 82-year-old Mitch McConnell, who says age is an issue for both candidates. Well, if anyone would be an expert on senior citizens with declining cognitive abilities continuing to serve as elected representatives, it's Batman villain Mr. Freeze over here. A diversity, equity, and inclusion program for firefighters and paramedics in King County, Washington, was suspended after backlash from employees. Part of the training included anti-racism lessons, which said that white firefighters harbored racist and sexist views and couldn't be not racist. We've covered a number of DEI raging dumpster fires on this channel, so I guess it makes sense firefighters are trying to prevent this. Oftentimes trying to be less racist against certain groups just leads to more racism against other groups. Just ask Harvard. Actually, that's exactly what the House Education and Workforce Committee plans on doing, as they issued three subpoenas to Harvard leaders to turn over documents detailing how they're handling anti-Semitic incidents on campus. Renton Fire Chief Steve Heitman says, What troubles me are certain test questions that might compel members to compromise their personal beliefs or values in order to pass a requisite for EMT recertification. This potential conflict may place members in the difficult position of choosing between their deeply held convictions and their professional roles as firefighters slash EMTs. I don't know why firefighters need anti-racism training. Are they afraid they'll refuse to do their job in certain communities? I would think if they were racist, they'd be even more inclined to want to put out fires everywhere, since fires turn everything black. And after the break, California faces more storms. Welcome back. California received more heavy rain this week, bringing flooding and rare tornado warnings. On the bright side, while floods can be dangerous, this has actually made the streets of San Francisco safer, since it washed away all the hypodermic needles lying around. It's like Mother Nature said, if the politicians won't clean this place up, I'll do it myself. Speaking of people getting completely washed, the South Carolina Republican primary is taking place today. And even though it's taking place in the future from the time I'm recording this, I'm confident in saying Donald Trump won. Why am I confident in that? Well, it's because polls leading up to this show Trump with a double-digit lead, and in the Nevada GOP primary, Haley lost overwhelmingly to none of these candidates. Though Haley has virtually no chance of winning the nomination, she says she's gonna stay in the race through Super Tuesday on March 5th. 
CNN reports a source close to Haley says this is because if Trump loses, a door could open for Nikki and a lot of other people. Her view is, I'm going for broke, even if it may make me unpopular with some in the party establishment today. Considering how much she's spending on this losing campaign, no one may have ever been more literal when saying they're going for broke. And even though I'm still a week and a half away, I don't think it takes a psychic for me to report that Nikki Haley has suspended her presidential campaign on March 6th. Speaking of people going broke, Congresswoman Barbara Lee from Oakland, California, says the federal minimum wage should be raised to $50 an hour. The current federal minimum wage is $7.25, and the highest state minimum wage is Washington at $16.28 an hour. Lee says, just do the math. Of course we have national minimum wages that we need to raise to a living wage. You're talking about $20, $25, fine. But I have got to be focused on what California needs and what the affordability factor is when we calculate this wage. So she's saying that to survive around the country, minimum wage would need to be $20 to $25. But to survive in the Bay Area, it would need to be $50 an hour? That sounds less like an America problem and more like a Bay problem. So why is she suggesting the federal minimum wage be raised to $50 an hour? This is like going out to dinner with friends, they all order the cheapest item on the menu, while you order three appetizers, the surf and turf, dessert, and 11 whiskeys, then say, so uh, wanna split the bill? Only this is the Bay Area, so all that expensive food would also have a bunch of hypodermic needles sticking out of it. Speaking of cities in a rush to become a dump heap, New York. To deal with the illegal immigrant crisis, New York City Mayor Eric Adams has launched a $53 million program to hand out prepaid credit cards to migrant families. A family of four migrants with two children under age 17 could get $15,200 a year. And don't worry, there are no ID checks or fraud controls. Anyone who wants to can just claim to be a migrant and grab a prepaid card. Don't worry, there's no way this plan could go wrong. And after the break, the death of Alexei Navalny. Welcome back. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has died in a Russian prison. He was serving a 19-year sentence on charges of extremism and was moved in December to a higher security prison above the Arctic Circle. Navalny was one of Russian President Vladimir Putin's biggest critics and accused him and his regime of corruption. Navalny was previously poisoned in 2020 and accused the Kremlin. Navalny's body was reportedly found with signs of bruising. Russian authorities claim he died from sudden death syndrome. You know, sudden death syndrome. Symptoms include headache, upset stomach, criticizing Putin, accidentally falling out of high windows, and or dropping dead for no reason at all. SDS, it's shockingly common in Russia. Russian authorities claim the investigation into his death has been extended, and a chemical analysis will be completed. I'm sure those will be transparent and honest results. Letting Russian authorities perform a chemical analysis on Navani is like letting the Zodiac Killer perform the autopsy on one of his victims. Well, it looks like they accidentally fell on this knife 40 times. No one is to blame here, especially not me. Over 400 Russians have been detained for publicly mourning and protesting Navani's death. Germany and the UK have both vowed to take action and seek new sanctions against Russia over this. Meanwhile, US President Joe Biden announced more than 500 sanctions on Russia after Navani's death. But his options are limited. Russia has already been sanctioned to high heavens over its war with Ukraine. Just about the only thing the US could do at this point is offer more financial aid to Ukraine. However, Senate Republicans blocked a bipartisan foreign aid and border package because they felt border security measures weren't strong enough. The Senate then passed a new foreign aid package separate from border issues. But then Speaker of the House Mike Johnson warned that the House wouldn't take up the foreign aid bill since it doesn't address border security. Johnson says he wants to meet with President Biden before the House takes any action on further aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Biden says he's happy to meet with Johnson if he has anything to say. I'm not too optimistic about that, though. Not because American politics are so divided they can't find a solution, but because speaking without having anything to say is all politicians do. You ask them what they want from Burger King, they'll just say, what a great question. There are so many options. Burgers, chickens, even mozzarella sticks in some. Then there's the fry versus onion ring debate. In summary, we'll do our best and God bless America. This lack of action benefits Putin. 
And if there aren't consequences, he could feel more emboldened to forcibly silence even more of his prominent critics. But if Vanni's death teaches us anything, it's that Donald Trump is the real victim in all this. At least Trump's acting that way, making Navani's death all about himself. In a true social post where he says Navani's death makes him more aware of what's happening in America, alleging the U.S. is heading down a path of destruction and is becoming a failing nation. I think he's saying that Russia is a terrible place and democracy is under attack there. I think he's also saying he fears America could wind up in a similar state if we're not careful. The, the problem, though, is this should have been two separate posts, man. This is like when people don't use commas properly. Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog? Makes sense Trump is feeling persecuted, though. New York Judge Arthur Engoron has ordered Trump to pay $355 million plus interest in his civil fraud case. Trump could wind up owing over $450 million as a result of this ruling. We covered this trial in depth and how this judge seemingly had made up his mind before it even began. One of Trump's lawyers said they will appeal the case and challenge the judge's definition of fraud, saying the case raises serious legal and constitutional questions regarding fraud claims slash findings without any actual fraud. If this doesn't work and Trump has to pay over $450 million, that would wipe out a huge amount, if not all of his wealth. At least that's what I would be saying if Trump didn't just unveil his newest merch, $400 gold sneakers called Never Surrender, produced by CIC Ventures LLC under a license agreement with the former president. Because if Trump's going to be running for office, he's going to be running in the goldest, gaudiest shoes imaginable. Who would buy these monstrosities? Apparently the answer is everybody because the limited edition Never Surrenders sold out hours after their launch. Biden should fight back by releasing his own line of shoes that make you feel just like the president. Because who wouldn't want to walk around in high tops that have absolutely no tread and are covered in olive oil? No better way to break the ice with someone at a party than to slip and slide around like you're walking on ice. That's actually how I met my Canadian Shutterstock model, totally real girlfriend. And here's a video I want to show you. We live in a society where everything is sexualized. What are the consequences? Now that might be something YouTube considers too controversial to talk about which is why I'm hiding that conversation in gaming content. Check out the pitfalls of sexual desire, according to Doki Doki Literature Club. An America Uncovered wouldn't exist without your support. Click that orange button to support us on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar an episode, and you can set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.